welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Now today, I wanted to talk about something I definitely wanted to add to my collection. And that is a World Time Watch. A World Time Watch, of course, is a step above GMT. Um, usually displayed with date discs and you can tell the time in multiple different cities either by the quick turn of a crown or by the click of a button. Now, for you guys that know uh, that know me or have watched the show for, for quite some time, you know that the only passion I have that's probably bigger than horology is traveling. I love traveling. I love exploring. And a world time watch is something I definitely want. Even though I'm not doing too much traveling right now, because, you know, I'm starting a new business and uh, I just don't have the time. Maybe a world time watch on my wrist uh, will keep that passion alive. I mean, it'll always be alive, but it's just, it's a cool thing to have. I find it a romantic complication. It's mixing my two biggest uh, passions into one. And I don't know, I'm just kind of corny like that. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about my top five best world time watches. Of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Rolex Submariner Hulk today. A uh, really sticky and humid day in Miami. Perfect day to wear the Hulk. And of course, for all you Rolex lovers, I wanted to let you know, I have the full gamut of Rolex sports watches. Ceramic Submariners, GMT Masters, Milgauss, uh, Explorer. I, I'm, I don't have a Daytona right now. All of that and more at Delray Watch Supply, delraywatch.com, my website where I buy, sell, and trade pre-owned watches. And also, if any of you guys is looking for an Omega Speedy Reduced, I just put one up uh, on special. Check out the hot deals section. Once again, delraywatch.com. All right, guys. So, these are in no particular order, and I'm going to give you the five my top five world time watches, and I'm going to explain why they made this list. Number one has to be the Patek Philippe 5130 World Time. Now, Patek Philippe actually invented this complication, I believe, in the early 2000s, and the 5130, in my opinion, is by far the best iteration of the complication. There have been three generations. The one previous to this, which is... Uh, you know, it's considered by far the worst iteration. It's very, uh, it's inexpensive compared to the rest. It's also very, very small. The proportions weren't right. Then we had the 5130, which is the one I love, with the great crown guards, a little bigger case, that round hour hand. And now there's a new version as well with a completely different case shape. However, the 5130 is my true love. Of course, my favorite, not counting the enamel dial ones, which go for hundreds of thousands of dollars, is the platinum version with the blue dial. This is a fantastic watch. Precious metal only, micro rotor movement, uh, you know, the multiple time zones changed with a click of a button, Patek Philippe seal. Does it get much better than this? Of course, these are not inexpensive. They started about $30,000. However, for you guys that want a beautiful watch with the same complication but don't want to spend as much, this next one is perfect and it's still hot horology in my book. And here we have the Gerard Perigo WWTC. Now this comes in two variations, either the power reserve variation or the chronograph variation, but as you can see, they are still a world time. However, this one is a slightly bigger case and can be found in stainless steel. And the world time is also controlled with a crown, an extra crown, at the 9 o'clock position. So not just a click button. This also comes in a ton of flavors. Steel, gold, rubber strap, bracelet, alligator strap. You even have limited editions like the financial world time, which marks the opening and closing of uh, the Japanese, the London, and the New York stock exchanges. So if you're a trader, that's a really, really cool watch. This guy can be had uh, around six or 7,000 pre-owned, and 
it's still Autorology. I mean, Gerard Perigo, maybe not a brand that is uh, as well known as some of the others on this list, but what can we say? I mean, their loss is your gain. Now we have uh, another fantastic version by a great brand, uh, and that is the Jaeger La Coltra Master Geographic. This is a beautiful watch. Um, it is. It comes in 39 and 40 millimeters. There's also the sector dial version. This is also changed. The world time is also changed with the crown up in the top left hand corner. However, it does not have the world time disc all the way around. It has a window at the bottom which shows the world time, but it is not fully exposed. And of course, it has a second timing window with minute and hour hand to tell the time. I like this, it really cleans up the world time dial. However, I much prefer the open look just because as I said, I'm obsessed with traveling. I like to see all the city names. But for you guys that are a little bit more OCD, you want a cleaner look, then this might be the perfect watch for you. And this one brand new, I believe is like 8,900. So uh, as you can see, doesn't break the bank. JLC in-house movement, automatic, also comes in gold and steel. You know, what can we say? Jaeger La Coltra Master Geographic might be the perfect home time watch or world time watch for you. Now we have the most inexpensive version on this list and a watch I know very well because I uh, was working retail back when it came out and it is the Nomos Zurich Whitesite or the Nomos Zurich Home Time. Uh, this is uh, Nomos in-house movement. This is not a true world time, it's more of a GMT, but it has that world time look and it can change over with the buttons. Uh, it's a very Bauhaus design, it's automatic. The, the, the dial's actually multiple layers. I quite like it. Uh, the minimalist look, the Bauhaus look might not be for everybody, but at around $45 to $5,000, it's really, really hard to complain. The Zurich is also the perfect case size. I believe it's a 41 and a half. I'll look it up to correct me though if I'm wrong. And you know, for the modern world time, it's perfect. It comes on a shell Cordovan strap, which is horse leather. The only leather that actually gets better with age in my experience. Also a very under the radar look, Nomos, um, you know, not very well known either and certainly not in the same price bracket as Gerard Perigo, this one is perfect if you want something that flies under the radar. And now last on this list uh, is not the most famous world time, but some arguably may say is the best world time out there. And that is the Lange One time zone. Just like Patek Philippe, precious metal only, but this one is a manual wind. It's a Lange One, you know, with the big date, the power reserve, but it also has the world time feature with the click button, just like the Patek. This has the classic Lange movement made out of German silver and uh, the hand engraved balance. Not to mention Lange's famous double, you know, construction, which they actually, they put it together, make sure it works, they take it apart, and then they put it together again, their uh, double assembly quality control, which is kind of insane. Uh, this is a little bit busier than the Pat Patek Philippe on the dial. I do like the Patek aesthetics a lot better, but I do think this movement is a lot prettier to look at. Uh, very similar in price to the Patek Philippe, the Lange One time zone is really hard to beat. Anyway guys, those are my five picks for the best world time watches on the market. Um, there's not that many out there. I could have mentioned the Cartier Calibre time zone. I could have mentioned the IWC Flieger time zone as well. Um, ooh, there's, there's a few others out there, um, certainly not common, the Frederic Constant as well uh, is a great budget alternative, but these are what I think are the five best ones. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really does help. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content.
Guys, thank you so much for sticking with me for another episode of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.